Hello guys, welcome back to another video. If you guys are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Shamso and I make family and faith related videos. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a favorite family recipe of mine. I love to make pasta. I love to eat anything pasta. Carbs are my absolute favorite things in the world. And of course, my children love lasagna and pasta and anything with a red sauce. Um, and so tonight for dinner, I am making us a lasagna and also trying out a new recipe um, and just making these super easy garlic knots. And I'm not much of a baker and I've never really been much of a baker. I've really actually never been much of a cooker. And so in today's video, that's one of the things I want to encourage young wives young mothers um, to cook for your family that it's worth it and just the skill of cooking is so important and I honestly it is one of those things that I find in the beginning I found to be very tedious and at times it is hard coming up with a recipe um, deciding what to make and what to cook and um, I've learned some tips and tricks over the years that I wanted to share with you guys but um, here I am I went grocery shopping and I bought a few ingredients that I was missing in my kitchen and so for this recipe um, the easy garlic uh, knots that I'm talking about um, we have all of the things but I just needed a few different um, things so I needed dried parsley and dried basil dried oregano and um, of course before I get started in making dinner which I cannot cook in a kitchen that is dirty so the night before I actually didn't close my kitchen and so what I do most nights like probably six out of the seven nights of the week I just I can't not go to bed with a messy kitchen I it just makes my life so much easier in the morning especially being a homeschool mom um, waking up in the morning I like to have my coffee I like to make breakfast and as soon as we eat our breakfast I want to get started on school and I like that when I come downstairs the kitchen is clean everything's where it needs to be I can make breakfast in a clean kitchen I can have my cup of coffee in a clean kitchen so it is an essential part of like my day if I wake up in the morning and the kitchen is not clean then I'm cleaning up and making breakfast and trying to drink my coffee and then we start school late and it just really throws us off so I've learned that the extra time and effort it takes to close my kitchen at night is a hundred percent worth it and disciplining myself to get to this point was not easy so don't think that I am saying that all of this or any of this is easy but I um, I think one of the things as a homemaker that I've learned and and I have not appreciated before is the level of discipline it takes to run a household it really takes a level of discipline it takes discipline it takes time management um, and so these little skills that I just never thought that I would be learning in working in my home, but I have, and it's been so wonderful, to be honest. It makes me feel like more organized. I can get more things done during the day. So it definitely keeps me on schedule. And now I can't live without my routine. I can't live without my schedule and the process that I have set up that is working great. So as you guys can tell, I definitely needed to do a little bit of cleaning in the kitchen and especially the fridge. So here I am, I'm actually reading the book or I've been going through with this cookbook. There's some recipes that I absolutely have tr tried and we love and there's some recipes that I haven't tried yet, but most of the things I, I feel like we wouldn't eat. So, but the, the book is called Half Baked Harvest um, and I will try to link some of this, like whatever I mentioned, where I bought it from in the Amazon link down below. So if you guys wanna check that out, feel free to do that but the book is called Half Baked Harvest. And so the recipe, what it calls for is one cup of warm water, one teaspoon of raw honey, one packet of active dry yeast, 
one and one half cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of whole wheat pastry flour plus more as needed. I find that one cup is enough for this recipe. I don't think I needed um, that other extra um, half a cup or whatever. And then um, one teaspoon of fine pink Himalayan salt. And then one fourth cup or uh, plus two tablespoons of grated uh, Parmesan cheese. Three garlic cloves, finely chopped or grated. Um, the next thing that you need is a tablespoon of dried parsley, one tablespoon of dried basil, two teaspoons of dried oregano, four tablespoons, um, one half stick of salted butter at room temperature, and yeah. So the dried parsley and basil tablespoon, all of those herbs, they are actually for the, um, the garlic like butter that you will use. So after I mix together my yeast and my water, I just set it aside and I let it kind of get foamy and activate. And then I added the flowers and the salt to using the dough hook. And then I mixed it on medium speed until the dough came together. And this was a probably maybe two to three minutes, I would say. So I turned it on. I added the flour as it was mixing. And yeah, I am really slow when it comes to baking because it takes me time to look at the ingredients and make sure I'm not messing everything up. But I just turned on my stand mixer, which I love. I did not think I needed this thing. Um, but it was the best gift I could ever get. My husband got it for me for Christmas and I absolutely love it and I use it. It's an essential part of my kitchen and I just absolutely love this thing. Um, and so I am just mixing the dough together here and then setting it aside. I put it into a ball and just set it aside, put a towel over it. And now I'm going to quickly get started on all of the things I need to do for the lasagna. So I took a pot of, um, I, I took a pot and filled it up with water. So as I was letting the water come to a boil, I decided that I actually wanted to pickle some red onions. So here I'm pickling some red onions because I wanted to use these pickled red onions for lunch the next day for my husband. I was going to make a chicken sandwich with pesto which turned out delicious by the way i made the bread fresh and then i used these pickled onions and it was 10 out of 10 it was just chef's kiss so i decided i'm gonna you know go ahead and pickle some onions and this is how i operate when i'm cooking in the kitchen i have an idea that pops into my head and then i'm doing something so i have multiple tasks going on and this is the beauty of us women we are seriously the best at multitasking and it's just wonderful so um i added some salt to my water to help it come to a boil and and then I decided to pickle some onions. Then I chopped up some white onions. You can chop up white onions, um, whatever kind of onions. You don't even have to chop up onions, but I like to add um, onions in my meat sauce for my lasagna. So I chopped up some onions. I would probably say it was half an onion. Again, when I make the lasagna, I've made this lasagna over and over again and tweaked things and added things to it. So I haven't really, I don't have an exact, um, I would say I don't have an exact recipe for everything, but I have an estimation of like what I do. So here I am and I took this pot. This is a Dutch oven, I believe it's called, and I'm adding my olive oil in it. Again, I'm not really using a tool to measure it, but I'm using the cap, which is kind of, I guess you can say a tool. I would say maybe it's equivalent to about one tablespoon. Um, that thing looks totally beat up and it's been through it, but I bake bread in the oven with that put it in the oven and bake bread and so it looks like a complete you know mess but I just need to scrub it off um, but yeah so as soon as I put the onions in I put the olive oil in and then I put the onions in and now I'm mixing it and I'm gonna wait for the onions to have that translucent like just a little bit more translucent and 
um, a, a little bit more cooked. I don't want them to burn or anything. And then here I have my smasher, this tool um, I got off of Amazon. Someone was using it in an Instagram story who was like making tacos or something and they were smashing up the meat, the ground beef with this tool. And I was like, I need that thing, like I need it. So I decided to get it. And honestly, it is such a good tool to have in your kitchen. It's not necessary at all, but it just makes it so much easier to make um, ground beef more ground. I also wash my hands a lot in between um, when I'm cooking. So when I'm using olive oil, because I poured olive oil in the water, as you guys saw the boiling water with the pasta, and with the uh, lasagna noodles and i usually do that so that when i strain it it doesn't stick together like the lasagna noodles are not stuck together and then whatever is left over and it gets on my hands i just use it to moisturize my hands because i have really dry hands and so moving on back to my pickling the onions which is completely irrelevant to this because we are not going to be using them tonight, but I'm pickling them. So I got this recipe off of Pinterest. Maybe I'll link it down below. I don't know if I can remember it at the top of my head, but as you guys can see here, it looks like I'm using a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Um, and then I had one cup of hot water. Um, and then there's sugar and salt. I think that was all I used to pickle the onions. This is actually my first time ever pickling onions, so I have no idea at this point how this is going to turn out. Um, and so I don't know if I 100% love this recipe. I don't know how else other people do it. Like I mentioned, it is my first time pickling onions, but um, it turned out well. I think that the apple cider vinegar, at least for me when I had the pickled onions, because it's been a day or two now since I made this video, so we've had the pickled onions since this video um and i would say that the apple cider vinegar flavor is a little bit like i can taste it maybe it's just the pregnancy hormones my husband says it's really good he likes it so i mean if he likes it and he's happy i guess that's good but maybe it's just my pregnancy taste buds um so we'll see i might attempt another pickling um recipe but for now that is what i am doing here so then going back to the lasagna but right here we're making the cheese filling for um the ricotta, ricotta filling for the lasagna so what i did was i took um the ricotta cheese and one egg some parsley flakes i was going to use fresh parsley and if you have fresh fresh parsley it is even better to use but because i didn't have fresh parsley and i had dried parsley i decided to just use the dried parsley so um, now we are moving on with the meat sauce i let that cook and come to a simmer and then i'm eat i'm adding the italian seasoning here and pepper again i'm adding maybe about one tablespoon of each of these ingredients and then i grade my cheese now we are getting to the fun part which is assembling all of the parts and this is kind of the fun part about a lasagna and sometimes the confusing part or just you know yeah so the first base what i do is i always put the marinara sauce at the very bottom so before i even put any of the lasagna noodles on i always just layer a base of marinara sauce and then i layer the pasta in and i do um cheddar cheese and mozzarella cheese so when i do the ricotta cheese filling here i add the mozzarella cheese on top of the ricotta cheese and then when i add the red sauce i add the cheddar cheese on top of the red sauce and the reason why i do that is because i love an extra cheesy lasagna like it just makes the lasagna that much better and so do the kids and anything cheese related i absolutely love i love cheese i love extra cheese on everything if i could just do extra cheese on everything i absolutely would so as you guys can see here i layer the noodles in on top of the mozzarella and the ricotta cheese filling and then i'm going to put my meat sauce on there and add a layer of cheddar cheese 
and just repeat that process. And then once you get to the very top, I'm gonna do the same process, but I'm going to just add pretty much everything. So I have the ricotta cheese filling, the mozzarella, then I have the cheese, uh, sorry, the red sauce, and then the cheddar cheese. So I know maybe sounds a little bit complicated and maybe people don't do their lasagna this way, but this is just how I do my lasagna. And um, one of these days I might have a blog post posted about how I do this. So at the end, I also add the mozzarella cheese. Once I add the, I like to mix it and the color that it gives is really nice. So I'm gonna pop that in the oven and because the noodles are already cooked, I usually will put it in the oven at 425 for 25 minutes with foil on and then I'll remove the foil and maybe do another 25 to 30 minutes. It just depends on the color that you want, how burnt you want your cheese to be on top. And so once I get that in the oven, I'm gonna get started on my garlic knots at this point in time. Now I'm starting to speed up because dinner is right around the corner. Everybody's getting hungry. So here I am trying to make the garlic um, butter sauce for the garlic knots as quick as possible and hoping that I can get this dinner on the table before 630. So we are going to flour the surface and then flour our dough and then just kind of roll it out and yeah, just roll it out. And so um, once I roll that out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the butter, the garlic, um, just all of the, the yummy goodness because it's, and it smelled so good. I melted the butter in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And here I am trying to show you guys how that turned out, but I spill it. So um, I did spill a little bit of that and then I had to clean it up off the ground, which was a lot of fun but um, to, like thankfully it wasn't too much. So I'm just gonna spread all of this yummy garlic, buttery goodness in the middle of this um, dough and then fold it so that I can get it cut up. So once I fold it, I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. I was trying to figure out the instructions on the book when I was reading it. it didn't quite make any sense on how she was doing this part of her folding and creating the knots. But what I did, I do it a couple of different methods here. Right here, I'm just trying to twist them um, and see how that turns out and see if I like that method. So right here, I just fold it and twist them. And then once I was done with that, I had a huge mess to clean up. And so one of my favorite things to do when I'm cooking, and maybe it's just the multitasker in me, is clean as I go. Like once I finish one thing, I clean up that station and so I have that space open for me to use. I don't have very much counter space in my kitchen, so counter space is valuable, is valuable. So I need to clean all this up. Right here, I'm letting them rise for about 20 to 30 minutes and I'm just checking on them to see how they are doing and they are doing really good. I took my lasagna out because it was all done. So now I'm gonna pop my garlic knots back into the oven and then start serving the kids and my husband dinner. And so I started plating everyone's food here and yeah, so this is what we had for dinner. I um, threw together a quick salad as well, and I just had romaine lettuce and arugula, um, parmesan, and Caesar dressing that I threw together that we can eat. Something green on the side with all of that carbs. And as you guys can see here, about 25 to 30 minutes later, maybe, 15 to 20 minutes later is what the book recommends, but I think I did um, 20 to 25. Everybody's oven is different, and I feel like sometimes with certain recipes, they suggest that um, your oven or that you cook something for 15 to 20 minutes at 425, but my oven doesn't get as hot as her oven probably, so that didn't work out. So I kept it in a little bit longer, but as you guys can see here, they turned out so delicious, and it was for sure simple recipe that I can put together and make for whatever occasion. I let them get a little bit toasty on top because I just love things when they have that extra crispy brownness, goodness, and um, yeah, I love things a little bit well done, 
I love that brown texture and that crunch. And so the kids absolutely loved it. My husband absolutely loved it. As you guys can see here, he thought it was delicious and had to come and give me a big hug and a kiss. And he's just the sweetest, but that is what we had for dinner. If you guys are looking for an easy dinner idea for your family, um, I hope that this video inspires you guys to make something delicious to cook for your children, to make something yummy for your husband and to just put dinner on the table, put as much food on the table as you can. And of course, after we had our dinner, right before dinner starts, I needed to light my candle. If you guys know, I love lighting candles, especially around dinner time and getting the house cozy um, and when I'm cleaning. So I have my, as for me, my house candle lit for dinner tonight and it was the perfect addition to a nice home cooked meal if you guys are interested in purchasing these handmade soy candles make sure you guys check out my link down below goodfamilyliving.com and purchase a candle um thank you guys so much again for watching this video i will see you guys again in my next video have a blessed rest of your day bye